Welcome back to another exciting episode of Medicure. Hello and welcome to another episode of Medicure. On today's show we'll be talking about the urea cycle. Yes folks, it's all about why you need to go. So today we'll be talking about the enzymes involved in the urea cycle and why they are so important. We're going to be focusing on diseases that are caused because of the absence or defects of these enzymes. So Dr. Amai, can you tell me more about the urea cycle? Why is it so important to us humans that we get rid of urea from within the body? I mean, isn't it a nutrient? Don't plants use it? Can't we use it? <laughs> Dr. Eric, you're so funny. Unless you're a plant, I don't think you want urea in your system. For us humans, it's literally poison. Firstly, in order to make urea, you need ammonia, which comes from the catabolism or breakdown of amino acids. Now you must understand that ammonia is very dangerous to the brain. Dr. Kito, Dr. Asaduro, would you like to shine some light on this situation? Sure. Well, urea, or rather ammonia, which is a precursor molecule to making urea, is so dangerous because the brain tissue is very sensitive to the ammonia. If there is too much ammonia present, it can cause comas. Yes, but the brain has a mechanism to prevent this. Cells get rid of excess ammonia by the reductive amination of alpha ketoglutarate to form glutamate by glutamate dehydrogenase and the conversion of glutamate into glutamine by glutamine synthesis. Well, it's all fun stuff, right? I mean, we're learning about enzymes that are complicated yeah. and long names, very long names. Um, now that we know why it's important to get rid of urea and ammonia from within the body, let's move on to the urea cycle itself and see how, it, um, how it's shipped out of the body, what enzymes are involved in the process and stuff like that. So, let's see, there's more complicated enzymes? Yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then let's let's move on. So, the removal of excess ammonia occurs via the liver and the kidney. So, they are the only two organs in the body that can remove um, urea from yes. the body. Yes. Oh well, we should be thankful we all livers are working properly. Yes. yes. Right. <laughs> you hear that, children? Don't drink and kill your liver. <laughs> all right. So, Doctor Asadura, what can you tell me about the um? the urea cycle in terms of the amount of steps there are and how it begins? Well, there are four steps in the urea cycle. The first step occurs in the mitochondrial matrix of the hepatocytes, which are liver cells. The enzyme ornithine transcarbamoylase transfers a carbamyl group mm -hmm. from carbamyl phosphate to ornithine to form citrulline. Okay, all right. So. That is the first step. Yes. All right, so um, what about you, Dr. Ayman? What can you tell me about the cycle? Well, the second reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme arginineosuccinate synthetase and requires ATP to activate the citrullate to form an intermediate known as, can someone help me with this word? Um, citrulline. Yes, citrulline. That little pesky word uh -huh. I never remember. Citrulline, AMP. Well, I, I think I can see why you don't remember it, right? <laughs> the amino group of an aspartate residue then combines with this intermediate to form arginineosuccinate. Alright, so that's two steps. Um, what about the third and fourth step? Well, arginineosuccinate lyase then splits arginineosuccinate to form fumarate and arginine. The final step of the urea cycle is catalyzed by arginines which cleaves arginine to produce urea and ornithine. Okay, so um, after that fourth step, does it does the cycle continue? Yes. Well, after the cycle, uh, after ornithine completes the cycle, ornithine then goes back into the cycle to for another round. Okay, so we have um, in the last step we have where the actual production of urea is taking place. Yes. So after urea enters the cycle in the first step. It goes through several processes by different enzymes where it's um, changed and converted into urea yes. end product, right? Yes. Okay, so um, that or ornithine is going back into the cycle for another round of recycling. Yes. So it keeps recycling itself. Yes. What goes around, goes around, goes around, comes all the way back around. 
Yes. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Amy, for that music. No uh, we, we'll definitely have some other talents more than body chemistry here. All right, so, well, that was a mouthful to take in. I don't know how I'm going to swallow that, but um, my body is doing it, so let's be grateful for that, right? Yeah. So we're going to go into the uh, enzyme deficiency diseases, which is actually the heart of the episode today. So Dr. Keto, can you get the ball rolling and let us know more about these enzyme deficiency diseases? Sure. Well, the first deficiency disease is N-acetylglutamate synthase or NAGS deficiency and is one of the most severe disorders of the urea cycle. NAGS is very important because it is used to create cofactors for other enzymes in the cycle. NAGS deficiency rapidly develop high ammonia levels in the blood. It is most common soon after birth or pre postnatal. Okay, um, Dr. Asadura, what about you? What, what do you have to add to these diseases? Well, there's another deficiency known as carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1 or CBS1 deficiency. It is also one of the most severe types of urea cycle deficiencies. CBS1 is an enzyme that combines ammonia with other molecules to make carbamyl phosphate in the first step of the urea cycle, which is necessary to get rid of ammonia. But like NAGS, the patients of this deficiency rapidly develop high levels of ammonia in the blood. Okay, um, what about you, Dr. Imai? Well, there's also only seen transcarb um, transcarbamylase, another one of those words I can't pronounce properly. O um, it's an OTC deficiency, mm -hmm. and OTC is needed to combine carbamyl phosphate with another molecule to make citrulline. If the enzyme cannot work, then carbamyl phosphate builds up, which leads to excess ammonia in the blood. Okay, so we're seeing hypoammonemia starting to occur because of these deficiencies, all right? Um, another one of the deficiencies is aginosuccinate synthetase deficiency, which is also known as aginosuccinic acid synthase, synthase and takes citrulline and combines it with aspartate to make aginosuccinate. Now, if this enzyme does not work, then the precursor molecules that are well made cannot be processed. So this leads to also hyperammonemia, which is a buildup of ammonia in the blood. Um, any more enzyme deficiency diseases, guys? Yes, there is one known as arginineosuccinate lyase deficiency mm -hmm. or arginineosuccinic aciduria deficiency. This affects the body's ability to clear ammonia, sorry, to clear nitrogen already incorporated into the urea cycle as arginosuccinate. This disorder causes an increase of ammonia in the blood as well. Okay, so what about, are there any other final enzyme well, deficiency diseases? There is arginine, which takes, well, arginase, the enzyme, which takes arginine and breaks it into two molecules, urea and onesine. The urea is then disposed of by the kidneys and this completes the last step of the urea cycle. The disorder, which is the deficiency in the arginase enzyme, mm -hmm. um, is the least common deficiency and results in the accumulation of nitrogen in the blood. Okay, um, so these are the most common enzyme deficiency diseases yes. and I'm seeing that with all the information we have here, that each of these are interlinked, right? Um, yes. We also see that the arginase is one of the most crucial um, enzyme deficiencies, although it is rare because you have the last step where urea is being formed yes. and you need to get that urea out of the system, which is essentially the, the ammonia that you're trying to break down. So right now we're going to forward into an interview with Dr. David Ali from Gulfview Medical um, where he's going to tell us more about the signs and symptoms of these diseases. Good afternoon, Dr. Ali. We are here to find out about the signs, symptoms, and treatments of the different deficiencies in the urea cycle. Can you tell us a little bit more? The urea cycle occurs in the liver. And um, in the liver, uh, the, the urea is formed, and, and the, the prote uh, protein is formed. Protein is broken down, and the, as protein is broken down, it is um, broken down into ammonia and amino acid. The ammonia um, has to be gotten rid of in, in the urea, in, in the urine. The symptoms from acute, um, from accumulation of urea um, is basically the same, right? It is either mild to severe in the um, 
usually in the children, um, it's usually fantasy, yeah, and they present with um, difficulty in feeding, um, uh, drowsiness, sleepiness, and not taking the food. And that is in my school, in severe symptoms, um, you get anorexic. When you eat high protein food, they get um, fits. Uh, and um, how do you get to um, treat these patients? Um, you have to treat them by one, restrict your protein, you, or you give them supplement, uh, amino acid. Um, the other thing, you could get medicine, that is the last one, uh, drugs. Well, thank you for your time, and this was very helpful. So, let's backtrack a second to these um, transport uh, defects. You know, we were talking earlier about the transport defects and the six enzyme deficiency diseases. So there are six enzyme deficiency diseases and three transporter defects. So, uh, Dr. Asadura, can you shed some light on um, these transporter defects as in what type of defects are they and that kind of stuff? Sure. Um, well, you said there were three. So of the first one, it's the mitochondrial ornithine carrier defect. It is also known as the triple H syndrome defect. Then there's a second one known as the mitochondrial aspartate or glutamate carrier defect. That also is also known as citrullinemia type 2 defect. And finally, there's a third one called the dibasic amino acid carrier defect. This one is also known as the lysinuric protein intolerance defect. Okay, so those are the three known types of... Um transported effects that occur yes. in the urea cycle, right? Yes. Okay, so Dr. Amy, you have anything to say on that? First of all, I'd like to say that I think those names are really long and complicated, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> I think we can all agree on that. Secondly, patients who have an onset of this disease during childhood or in their adulthood have either a partial enzyme deficiency mm -hmm. or defect. Okay, so um, by partial enzyme deficiency or defect, you mean as in the structure of the enzyme is not complete? Yes, there is some functionality in that it will work, but it's not effective as it's supposed to. Okay, so it's not carrying out its full duty. Exactly. Alright. And this degree of functionality varies from person to person. So each patient will have a different effect a different symptom. Okay, so there's no one set of symptoms for um, this defect? The set of symptoms are the same, it's just the extent to which oh, okay. these symptoms okay. show up. Alright, so it's the difference between mild to extreme? Yes. Okay, alright. Well, that's uh, the transported effects. We're going to go into some more detail about the defects. Alright guys, so we're wrapping up the program now and we're at the final stage. So we've done the six enzyme deficiency diseases and the two transported defects, stay rather, and we're going to go into one more disease which is gout. Gout is very common. Now gout is an inherited disease and it's also far, it's most common in males and it's due to a purine metabolism disorder and it is characterized by a raised and variable blood uric acid level and also um, recurrent acute arthritis. Now, this is due because of crystals of sodium urate that accumulate in the um, connective tissues and cartilage. And these crystals are in the shape of needles. Now, that will be very painful. Most of the time, uric acid dissolves and is, is um, disposed of by the kidneys. However, everybody is pr producing too much of this uric acid and the kidneys cannot cope with this large production. It builds up and this accumulates, goes into joints and causes... Um, pain, inflammation and swelling. Alright, so the main symptoms are usually red skin, um, itchness, inflammation, um, fever, less flexibility, severe pain in joints, all these joints areas. What about um, other treatment methods, preventive methods of pain? Well, from your doctor you can get some steroid treatment, but there are lots of at-home measures which are just simple things, putting ice on your joints, not using them in vigorous exercise and elevating those affected joints. Alright, so it's basic drugs and um, rest. Yes. Alright, so thank you guys for viewing um, Medicure today. And we hope that today's issue was just as informative as, as it always is. So 
Again, this is Medicure, where we tell you all about diseases, causes, and, and symptoms. symptoms. So thank you all, guys. We'll see you all later. Bye. Bye. So natural to me. If this is love, love is easy. It's the easiest thing to do. If this is love, then love completes me. Cause it feels like I've been missing you. A simple equation, but no complications. Good day viewers, thank you for viewing another episode of Medicure where we let you know all the diseases, causes and symptoms. On today's episode we'd like to say special thanks to Dr. David Ali who uh, gave us the opportunity to interview him. Thank you for your time. We'd also like to thank the staff at Godfrey Medical for being so considerate to accommodate us. We'd also <laughs> like to say special thanks to our awesome a cameraman oh, and our very own Nick Nuss. Hello everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the mystery man behind the voice guys. Alright, so on the link below, you'll see in the description, down below the video, you will see that there are some details about and more information about the urea cycle as well as the six enzyme deficiency diseases, transporter defects, as well as gout. So if you want to find out anything more or find out more about diagnosis, please click the link below. And we thank you all for viewing in today. It has been wonderful. You guys were a really nice audience. And this was another episode of Medicure. In order to make ammonia, you need urea. Which uh, doesn't that be kill? <laughs> Let me tell you why I'm cool. Okay, I'm you're <laughs> <laughs> Put the urea cycle by itself. And well, in this case, I usually say cricky, 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 but all. <laughs> Instead of least common, but most uncommon deficiency disease. Chill. <laughs> 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 So this is what happens when I see the chill. Okay guys, right? <laughs>